Rich here with Blood Bar Channel. Here to share with you tonight scriptures that Christians don't like to read. Or if we read it, we skip over it. We run over it really quick. We don't want to meditate on it. We don't want to entertain it. We just want to read it to say that we read it and we move on from there. I want to keep this video on the 15 minutes. I'm a talker, so let's see if we could do it. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6 with me. Okay, Ephesians chapter 6, start out uh, with children obey your parents. Then it come down to talking about servants and masters or bosses and employees. Um, then they come on to put on the whole armor of God. And look in verse 10 of chapter 6. Look what it say. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all that to, to stand. Whew. Then it come down in verse 14 said, Stand therefore, having girded up your waist with truth. We're not going to get go that far. But I also want to read it in the NLT. It said here, the verse that we are focusing on. But let's still, we're focusing on, focusing on verse 12, but we want to start from verse 10. Finally, Final word, be strong in the Lord and in his power and in his mighty power put on put on all of the of God's armor so that you will be able to stand against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirit in heavenly places. All right. We don't like verse 12. It's too challenging. It's too clear. It's too convicting. It restrain you. Because it said, final word. Or in the, I love to read it in King James Version. It said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. He called us to be strong in him. And in the power of his might. Then it say, put on the whole armor of God that, that he or you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So here, God has called us to be strong and to put on the whole armor of God. As we read down, it's going to explain in details what the armor of God is. But look at verse 12. It said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hmm. I got to take a minute right there. Got to take that in. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. My warfare is not with the people who cut me off on the street. It's not with the people who speak behind my back. It's not with my boss who didn't give me a promotion, didn't give me a raise. It's not with employees who try to stab me behind my back. My warfare 
is not against them. It's not against people that go into the supermarket with and they may have take the last carrot. And I really wanted that carrot. And I'm about to say, hey, you, you, you see me going for that carrot, but you grab it. You knew I needed that carrot. So our warfare is not against a person who take that last carrot. Let's go, let, let, let's um, think of something even more deeper. The person who leave their shopping cart in the um, handicap parking space or may purposely park that shopping cart behind your vehicle. Our warfare is not against them. But you know what we want to do? We want to war with them. We want to cuss those out who cut us off on the street. We want to, anyone who upset us, we want to get at them as Christians. And now this, I'm talking about Christians. I'm not saying the unbeliever can't apply this. But this is for blood bought. Those who have been bought by the blood of Christ. Our warfare is not against our brothers and sisters in the, in, in, in the local congregation. Even though there's times when you want to cuss them out. But this verse is restraining you. said, this is what God wants you to do. Now, there is a place. To exercise that liber liberty that God has given you. For example, if a brother or sister accuses you of stealing, you defend yourself. So listen, I don't appreciate you accusing me of doing something I didn't do. You're lying. You need to repent. That's all we can do, we can go to an extent where the Bible give us another liberty. We can bring two or three people, sit down and talk and try to fix this. After that, there's nothing you can do. Not a thing. That's as far because now God will fight your battle. But we don't want God to fight our battle. I want to fight that battle. I want to knock that person out. For accusing me of doing something that I didn't do. That is our attitude. And that's why instead of we grow in Christ, we, we um, decrease in Christ. <laughs> if there's such thing. Because we want to fight our own battle. We don't believe that God can defend us. Instead of us bruising our knees by praying a lot. Lord, it's hard. Father, help me, strengthen me that I may be like Jesus in the midst of this situation. Look what he said. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. A good example is this election. We saw what, what took place, but that is still not our fight according to the scripture. The Bible said we don't get entangled with the cares of this life. Now, again, we have liberty where we can vote, we can stand for what is right, but that's all we can do. I'm not going to go around and say, man, I hate Biden or I hate Trump or no. God wants us to love them because that is not our battle. Our battle is not to hate those who are in, uh, in, in those uh, positions, but our battle is to love them. I don't have to speak bad about any government leader. No matter how much I wanted this person and how, or how much I wanted that person. 
I don't have to do that because that's not my battle. I have no control over that. My battle is this, to pray and ask God grace in, the, in, 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 in that situation. That's all I can do. And that's all God wants you to do, to love them, to pray for them. Because our dependency as Christian, not talking about the unbeliever now, how they act is how they act, but we are different. We are the light of the world. We show them the light. So I don't, if you are Christian and you cussing out who the president is or who your boss is or who your neighbors are or whatever, you're not being obedient to God. Because it's like we're saying God isn't sovereign. God may have placed those neighbors um, next door to you. God may have given you this kind of boss. God may have given you this kind of um, child or given you these kind of children. Some of us say, man, I trade my kids for, for, for John kids down the street. Those kids are disciplined. But this, this is um, what God chose for you. This is the situation God put you in. This is who God allowed. That's God's sovereignty. He is in control of everything. That's why I said your warfare is not against flesh and blood. Now, we need to make some correction here. Because our warfare is not against flesh and blood, God don't want you to go now and say, okay, I'm going to cuss out Satan. I'm going to bind him in the name of Jesus. Oh, bring, bring, that, bring that snake here. I'm going to chop him up in two. I'm going to pull out my, my, my spiritual machine gun and I'm going to blow demons up. Oh, I'm on this rampage with this spiritual machine gun. No. God don't want you to act that way. That's foolishness. It's stupidity. Anyone who say I'm going to bind Satan, how are you going to bind? This church bind him last week. He got loose, it seemed like. This church bind him um, a, a year ago. Everybody's binding Satan. And it, it still seems like there's trouble in this world. After all the Biden, bite, not Joe Biden, but all that bite, Biden uh, binding of Satan we are doing. He's still loose. A matter of fact, the Bible says he goes about like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. So that's not how we war with the unseen world. We war. Look at what he said. Whew. So much to say. I don't know how I could do 15 minutes. We war with the unseen world by putting on the whole arm of God. We indulge in the word of God, indulge in prayer, indulge in fasting, indulge in following what the word say so our faith may grow. That's our reward. The scripture said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but powers and principality, powers and principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, who causing people to act the way they do. There's an unseen world, but we as Christians want to hear that. I want to cuss this sister out. I want to cuss that brother out. I want to separate myself from, from the neighbors. I want to put up all kind of fences so I don't have to see them. This is our attitude instead. Or maybe you're living in a, um, a neighborhood and all kind of different cultures move in and you're saying, dog, I need to get out of here. No, before you do something like that, Ask God, what is my purpose? Let me pray for that person who cut me off on the street. Let me pray for my boss who treated me cruel, cruel, cruelly. 
Let me, let me, um, let me see what God's purpose is for me in this situation. That's not warring with flesh. Again, you exercise your ability, the ability that God give you to defend yourself. And it's this small. You don't defend yourself by cussing, by fighting, by doing it. Your defense is very small. God give you a tiny space to exercise your right within the boundaries of the word of God. But after you have done that, let God. And that is not warring with flesh because you'll never win. And you'll never grow to the place where God wants you to be. Our warfare is not against flesh and blood. You were bought. I was bought. Those who accept Jesus in their heart are blood bought. Peace out.